Way back in 1962, Sabrina Spellman appeared for the first time in Archie's Madhouse. This was a comic book which ran all the way from 1959 to 1982. Much to the surprise of her creator, George Gladder, Sabrina proved so popular that she spawned a 1970s animated series, and again another one at the end of the 1990s. Sabrina, of course, has appeared in many comics since, and we've even got her latest outing in the new Netflix series based on her latest comic book exploit with a bit of a, a darker tone. Now clearly all of that is far too modern, relevant and current for me to discuss, so instead I'm going to be talking about this. Now this is Sabrina the Teenage Witch Brat Attack for IBM PC compatibles running Windows 95 and above, and it's based on the 1996 show of the same name starring Melissa Joan Hart. I don't want to be a cat for the next 75 years. You'll do fine and we're all pulling for you. So I guess we should probably take a look, shall we? Ah, the late 90s. This box radiates that sparkly twee 90s feeling. Sabrina the Teenage Witch Brat Attack. Released in 1999 by Knowledge Adventure Inc. and developed by Hypnotics. An action adventure in the other realm. Featuring the voice of Melissa Joan Hart from the hit TV series. Yes, no expense spared here. The rear of the box reveals a blurb on a scroll, a preview of the levels to come, and an age rating. This shouldn't be too hard then. Specifications for the time are fairly light. This Windows 95 program requires a Pentium 133, 16 megabytes of RAM, a quad speed CD drive, 16 bit Windows compatible sound, and 256 on screen colours. This CD release also caters for Macintosh users, but that's something we're not interested with today. Inside the box are three items. A Havas interactive registration card, a Sierra home slash knowledge adventure catalog with page upon page of both bewildering and exciting software and the dual case containing both the CD and manual. There's nothing of note really in the manual, we can just pick it up as we go along. Being a CD paired with Windows 95 or 98, we are blessed with auto run, meaning that almost immediately after inserting the disc, we are graced with this screen. Along with installation, we have the option to play a demo of Spellbound. This was the first Sabrina PC game, released in 1998, based more heavily around, well, spells. It's a game, it's nice enough, I guess. I'm not, I mean, normally I'd say we'll save this for another day, but that's really not going to happen. What will happen is installation. Ah, I miss these installation screens, each one a little bit different, offering their own little quirks. <sighs> well, that didn't take long. All right, time for some Sabrina action. Oh no, not like that, you filthy bastard. We begin with a nice little animation, bringing us up to speed about some kind of magic beanie arriving and Salem the cat running off with it, which leaves us tasked with finding the bloody cat and retrieving the beanie. Salem, is somebody at the closet? Salem? Not again, Salem's always making a mess that I have to clean up. Although that's, that's not really a beanie, is it? Now it's obvious to most Windows 95 units that this is one of those 90s multimedia type games, allowing limited point, click and navigational operations. Most people would refer to them today as flash games, which isn't that far from the truth. 
This game was actually created with Macro Media Director, a tool used for many a CD-ROM based experience in the 90s and early noughties. And in fact, Macro Media were the people who created Flash in the first place. Adobe would buy them out in 2005, leading to Adobe Flash and Adobe Director. But really, they're based all on the same underlying technology. Director 5.0 delivers even more power with advanced text handling and anti-aliasing, multiple casts, over 150 new lingo extensions. So, setting expectations here, it means our gameplay will be quite limited. I could use this. As Sabrina, we can navigate either by mouse clicks or using the directional arrows. Our task is really one of collection. First up is to collect these items found all over the shop. These build up your inventory, which can then be used to form spells. Being a multimedia game, we can obtain new spells by finding compact discs. Ooh, a new spell. Which will then appear as recipes in the lab top. Welcome! You've got spells! If you have all the items for a spell, you can make it. Depending on the type, you will then get several hits that you can use on yourself for spells like invisibility or on enemy foes to incapacitate them briefly. Anyway, our first task is of course to find that bloody cat. He's in the maw of a mal, behind these giant rat guinea pig things in the pet shop. Score one for the witch. I want my mommy. Salem then tells us that Sabrina's cousin Amanda, who I presume is the titular brat, has taken the beanie thing. A painting on the wall then tells us to collect four items in order to defeat Amanda. A yummy dummy, goody two-shoes, hex reflex, and a tantrum tamer. And that's really the rest of the game. Find the four pieces, Sabrina. Check in with me from the lab top. The yummy dummy at school is first, and it's from this point on where you really realise how damn finicky and crappy it is to move your protagonist. Ooh, the chemistry lab. This ought to be fun. She gets stuck all the damn time, especially if you're using the mouse to move. And coupled with targeting enemies with the mouse, it gets pretty frustrating. Coupled with that, collision detection is worse than that Justice episode of Red Dwarf. You're gonna regret that. Anyway, we need to get some sprinkles from the kitchen, then kill a frog to get its sweat, and then we can get the cake. Great. Perfect. I say it needs anchovies. This from a guy who likes the smell of sweat socks? Come on, we gotta go. Magic portal bound for limbo, leaving in 10 seconds. The inclusion of Nick Bouquet as Salem with his nonchalantly indolent comments is, I must say, quite welcome throughout the game. Next up are the goody two-shoes, which are in the mall again. Now this is where the game turns into Sabrina the Teenage Glitch. <laughs> because it's not that difficult to get stuck on an elevator and never to be able to move again. When this happens, you need to resume your game and redo the level. It's irritating, but given it only takes about 10 minutes to get through each section, it's survivable. This shoe shop looks crazy as crap. These little goblin cops are irritating as hell as well. Next is the Hex Reflex. Now this one is in a castle, which you can access through a magical book, naturally. Bingo. The music, you stopped it. Oh, thank you. It was scaring me to death. Now, I actually really like the feel of this level. It helps that I love castles, of course, but... <laughs> and Sabrina's fate. Oh my god, that fire shooting bastard needs to be punched in his freaking face. Always enjoy the view. Bingo! How come nobody ever says Forget The final it, object, for whatever reason, is on Mars. A Mars filled with volcanic eruptions, down. snow, and ski All lifts. Now, I actually got a little stuck here because I didn't realize that you need to use a spell to freeze the lava. This mechanic of using spells on your surroundings hasn't appeared before in the game, but, but that's fine. It still makes logical sense. 
But then you get this new potion which isn't in your spell list and nor can you freeze over this lava and get where you need to be. It took me about 20 minutes to realise you just need to click on this volcano to stop the flow and then you can freeze the lava pool and cross over. I mean, in hindsight it makes some sense, but really, for a game for 8 year olds it needs more direction at this point. And I'm not even upset that I couldn't work out a child's game. No, definitely not. I could use this. Yes! It's the Tantrum Tamer. On to the last level, which is just a strange moving maze. To be honest, it's not that difficult. And then in the middle, we meet Amanda, and then we can chuck some things at her. And then the game is finished. Beat me! I stole the beanie and I'm going to keep it! Boy, she's a real brat, isn't she? You said it, Salem. Let's teach her some manners. What are you doing? Putting a stop to all this. Not if I stop you first. Hey! And actually, okay, even though it has many, 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 many flaws, I quite enjoyed the entire experience. There's something so nostalgic about these Macromedia titles. They're really crap. I mean, really, really crap. But they hold a place in history. A place where multimedia was really quite exciting. And where titles like this were popping up faster than oiled push pops. There are certainly better games to play, of course, but if you want a burst of Sabrina orientated nostalgia, then this is actually not a bad game to get hold of. I'm late, I'm late, I'm late. Bingo. Got any bananas? I'm tired of this feeds all pet chow. Anyway. That's my episode on Sabrina the Teenage Witch Brat Attack, and that's about as current as I get. Feel free to click some other things here. In any case, have a great evening. With a full tank, a girl can do anything. Welcome. You've got spells. Now brewing. Invisibility spell.